Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the Tombin Synapse 19, which is a really versatile and compact everyday carry backpack. And I've been curious to try this one out for a while. On the channel in the past, we've looked at the Cynic 22, which is kind of the upgraded version of this bag. We've also looked at the Synapse 25, which is the larger version of this same bag. But I was still curious about the Synapse 19 in particular. I'd always heard great things. And I was very interested after I read James Clear's minimalist travel packing article where he talked about how he uses this bag to travel worldwide. I'm still a little shocked that he's able to do it with a bag this compact. I'm not at that level of minimal packing. It does offer an impressive amount of space for its size and there's just a lot of interesting features here. So I was curious to try it out. I've been using it for the past couple of weeks and in this video I'm gonna be talking about my experience testing it. I'll show you how I've loaded it out, walk through all the different features and I'll also talk about how it compares to some of the other popular daily bags that are currently on the market. Before jumping into the video, I wanna thank the company for sending the bag for me to test out. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Danny and on this channel, we love reviewing popular travel and everyday carry gear. If you like these types of videos and you'd be interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a lot. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Starting off with the outside of the bag, the aesthetic here is gonna feel very similar to the Cynic 22 and the Synapse 25. So it has that classic kind of Tombin vibe. It's a little bit more functional. It has a lot of zippers and pockets. It's not a very minimal bag. Feels like it would be right at home in the outdoors, but it's still an aesthetic that I feel is gonna work well for exploring a city or potentially even taking it to the office or walking around campus. The bag is offered in a variety of colors and materials. The version that I have here is the Black Halcyon, which I've become a big fan of after using this material with the Tombin Teco Knot. I really love the weight and the feel of this material. I also like the texture that it brings. This gridded pattern is very you know, Tombin to me. And when I look at it, it, there's something about it that really catches my eye. And the material also feels durable and like it's gonna offer a nice amount of weather resistance. And then you also have some great YKK zippers all throughout. Continuing along the front of the bag, you have the classic Tombin logo, but on this version of the bag, it's actually blacked out, which I think looks really cool with the exterior that I have here, the black coloring, they all kind of blends together and gives it a little bit more of a minimal vibe as opposed to the red airplane that they typically have. I also like this center placement as opposed to the new placement on the Cynic bags where they have the logo down at the bottom. There's something about having it at the center that gives the bag a more symmetrical feel in my opinion. And then you also have at the bottom a little loop that's gonna be great for attaching something like a bike light. Moving into the capacity, the bag comes in at about 19 liters, which is a really nice minimal daily bag size in my opinion. I was able to hold all the items that I normally like to carry with me. I still even had a little bit of leftover space. And I like that even when the bag is a little bit more packed out because of its smaller size and silhouette, it doesn't really stick out too much, which makes it great for navigating crowded areas, jumping onto public transit and carrying on to pretty much any domestic or international airline. Taking a look at the straps and the back paneling, so far the bag has been pretty comfortable to wear. I like how the straps have been implemented here. These are the Tombin edgeless straps, which have become very popular as of late. They have a nice amount of padding on the inside. The material isn't super breathable, but these straps do have a nice width to help prevent the bag from digging into your shoulders. I also like the contoured shape that the straps have, and you also have an adjustable and removable sternum strap to help distribute the weight. And then at the bottom of the bag, you have two loops, which are gonna allow you to attach a waist belt that is included with the bag. This is a very simple strap. Normally I don't end up using these as I don't feel like they add that much additional padding or support, particularly with a bag of this size at 19 liters. It's really not gonna get so heavy that I would want to wear this. So I'm glad that you can fully remove it. And this also allows you to pair with some of the more padded belts that Tom Ben sells on their site. If you like to have a little bit more support with your daily bags. And then taking a look at the back paneling so far, this has been pretty comfortable. You have a nice amount of padding here, and I like that this does have a more breathable mesh on the back paneling. However, there's not a ton of elevation here, so after wearing this for a longer period of time, there's not that much airflow, so you will start to notice your back getting a little bit sweatier. And the back paneling here is a little bit different than the one on the Cynic 22. So that one actually includes a frame sheet and it also has a luggage pass-through that's not included here. You can purchase a separate frame sheet if you wanna have a little bit more support in the back. I think the frame sheets are helpful, particularly if you don't carry a laptop, as sometimes if you place bulkier items in the compartment, you can kind of feel them 
poking up against your back. I currently have the laptop on the inside, which we'll take a look at in a second, which provides the support that I need and still makes it comfortable to wear the bag. But I do wish that this had been updated a little bit to maybe include some of the back paneling technology that we've seen in bags, like the updated shadow guide, which has you know a little bit more just breathability, elevation, it has that kind of fishbone skeleton back paneling. So hope that that is incorporated into more of Tom Ben's daily bags in the future. Jumping into the organizational options, this is really the bread and butter of the Synapse and Cynic line of bags. Every time I use one of these bags, the organizational layout never ceases to amaze me and how much space is offered in each of the compartments, how well laid out everything is. So diving first up into the front center area, you have just a simple quick access pocket. This one is gonna be a little bit smaller. It's gonna be great for those accessories that you need to grab more quickly during the day. So in this pocket, I currently have my Apple AirPods Pro, and then I also have a lightning cable to charge my tablet and my phone. Beyond that, I don't have much else in here. You can see it goes down about the length of my fingers, and this is the first of the O-rings that you'll see throughout the bag, which allow you to configure uh, the bag with a lot of the different pouches and accessories that Tom Ben sells separately. Behind that compartment, you have a deeper zippered pocket, which is meant to serve as the water bottle pocket. This is something that I've always been a little bit on the fence on with Tom Ben's Cynic and Synapse bags. They place the water bottle pocket in the center of the bag to keep it balanced. I can definitely see the value of that when you just have one water bottle on the side of a bag and it's really heavy. It can sometimes kind of pull the bag off to the side. So it makes sense to kind of have that weight here in the center. and. Ever since I first saw this, I was thinking that it would be impossible to fit the water bottles that I would like to use when the rest of the bag is packed out. But again, because of the volume and the design of these compartments, I'm able to fit the same 20 ounce water bottle that I use in all of my other daily bag videos that fit in there pretty comfortably. When I really pack out the main compartment, it can start to get a little tricky to squeeze it in. But for the most part, I haven't noticed any issues on the inside of this compartment. You have kind of a nice meshy lining. And then if you don't wanna carry a water bottle, it's just gonna be a nice deep compartment that you can pair with other pouches or that you can just place larger accessories into. Here at the top of this compartment, you have another O-ring. So I really love the implementation here and the flexibility that the compartment gives you. And then you have additional zippered compartments on each side of the bag, starting off here on this one. You have plenty of volume for anything a little bit bulkier that you wanna store and be able to reach a little bit more quickly. You can see just how much space is offered here, even with my sunglasses with their case, which is what I normally store in here. There's still plenty of leftover capacity if I wanted to place something else. And then on the side of this compartment, you have a few slots that are gonna be a good spot to put something like a pen. I have a stylus here, and then I also have a flashlight. And then on the inside of this compartment, again, you have an O-ring. Tombin includes one of these lanyards with the bag that's gonna be a great spot to attach something like your keys or a multi-tool. And then on the other side, a similarly sized compartment. So again, you have that same volume, individual volume in each of these areas. So it's nice that you don't have to kind of make compromises in how you use this space. In this compartment, you have another O-ring which I've paired with a little sanitizer bottle with a carabiner. I've also attached the Tom Bin Ghost Whale pouch, which is where I carry some of the dongles and cables that I like to have with me. Here you can see the benefits of that O-ring system. I can pull the pouch out, I can pull my sanitizer out, and I don't have to worry about it potentially getting lost while I'm exploring the rest of the space in this compartment if I wanna to get to anything else that I have in here. And then on the side of this compartment, you just have an additional slip pocket instead of the little pen slots. And in this one, I just currently stored my Apple Magic Mouse. And then at the bottom, you have a slightly larger zippered compartment, again, with its own independent volume. I really love the flexibility offered by the volume that this compartment has. This is gonna be a great spot for bulkier items and pouches that you wanna be able to reach easily during the day. In this compartment, I currently just threw in a bunch of the accessories that you know are a little bit bigger that normally don't fit into smaller pockets. So I have my GoPro Hero 3 Plus. I also have a little headlamp that I like to have with me when I'm out at night for walking the dog and things like that. I have my Blue Pop portable Bluetooth speaker and power bank. And then I also tossed in my Matador Nano Dry Shower Towel and this has a carabiner on the case, which again shows off a few more of the O-rings that are in this compartment. And then with the compartment empty, you can see just how much volume it has. So for traveling, this is gonna be a great spot to put your toiletries, tech pouches. This is also meant to pair with Tom Ben's handy little thing pouch. So really love the flexibility offered here, regardless of whether you pair it with accessories or not. 
The last area that we're gonna take a look at is the main compartment. And so the Synapse is a top loading bag. It has a zipper that doesn't go all the way down. And normally I'm a big fan of clamshell style bags, but for the Synapse, for some reason, it just really works well as a top loader in my opinion. There is some you know, value in being able to open it up completely flat. I love that in many other bags, but there's something about just the aesthetic and the style of the Synapse that works well for just kind of shoving stuff into this main area and not having to worry about opening it up. It also feels like it offers maybe a little bit more capacity. I don't know, there's just the flexibility with the fact that this is top loading that has worked very well for the style of this bag. You can still opening it up wide enough to get a good view to the inside. You also have the gray Halcyon material on the inside, which gives you a little bit of contrast so you have some visibility. And then in this compartment, in addition to the space, you have plenty of options to configure this with Tom Bin's accessories. So at the top here, I actually placed the Tom Bin handy little thing pouch. This is the smaller version, which attaches to these little loops here at the top. So if I want to reach this easily, I don't have to worry about it falling into the bottom of the bag. And then in this compartment, I just threw in a bunch of the items that I normally carry with me. I have my Evergood Civic Access Pouch, which I did a review on recently. If you want to check out how I load this out, a link uh, to the video in the description below. And then I also tossed in a GORUCK Shadow Pouch that has some of the bulkier accessories like the playing cards, the manicure set, medical kit, little things that I like to have with me that I didn't want floating around loosely in this main compartment. And then I also placed my laptop. And so in this case, I'm using the Matador laptop sleep that I featured in a separate video, which offers a ton of weather resistance and some nice padding. This is the type of sleeve that works well with a bag like this that doesn't have built-in laptop protection. So if you, you know, wanna give your device a little bit more padding and peace of mind, this is a great sleeve as I can just pull it out when I need to use it. Gives it a little bit of extra protection. It has its own little zipper if I wanted to place some of my tech accessories in there. Tombin has their own caches that they sell that you can actually attach to these little loops at the top. So they have the, the caches that have some rails. You pull the laptop sleeve out when going through TSA. It seemed a little bit cumbersome for my needs, so I didn't choose to use that one. I like the Matador pouch in particular. It's a little bit simpler, still easy to grab. Uh, but now with the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside. You have two more O-rings here on the back. Nice amount of space. I really like the flexibility of this open layout. And then on the flap of the compartment, you just have this little elastic slip pocket, which is gonna be great for placing maybe some flip flops, some shoes, toiletries, a tablet. In my case, I just have a full-size moleskin notebook, but it's nice that you have at least a little bit of separation in this compartment. And then if you wanna use it for minimal travel, it is gonna be able to hold maybe a packing cube and you can leverage the compartments on the front to hold a dot kit, maybe an additional pair of shoes. And you can use this for a longer weekend trip or even longer if you get really creative. So really love the simple layout of this main area and just the flexibility of all the pockets throughout the rest of the bag. It works great as an everyday carry bag. You can use it for minimal travel. And if you're looking for something very versatile and durable, that's gonna be a little bit more compact. And this is gonna be a fantastic option to check out. And so to wrap up, it's been a great experience testing out the Synapse 19 over the past couple of weeks. You can currently purchase this on the company site for about $210, which is definitely a bit of an investment. The bag offers a very solid build quality. It's assembled in the US in smaller batches. You get a lot of great features for the price point, but there are gonna be a lot of other great options in this price range that may be worth considering. And so as I was testing this out, the first bag this made me think of is of course the Cynic 22, which is really similar in a lot of ways. The biggest differences are that it has a clamshell style opening, it has an integrated laptop sleeve, compression straps on the inside, and it also has a luggage pass-through with an included frame sheet. So you do get some extra features with that bag. It comes in at a higher price point at closer to $300, so that's something that you'll wanna keep in mind. And it's a very solid bag. I really liked using the Cynic 22. I do think there is some value to the top loading layout of the Synapse. And if you're somebody who doesn't normally carry a laptop or you don't mind using a cache or an extra sleeve and you wanna save a little bit of money, then the Synapse 19 may still be the better way to go. But if you like those additional touches that the Cynic 22 comes with, or you just really love a clamshell style bag, but you want this organization and build quality, then that's gonna be a fantastic option to consider. The next bag this made me think of is the Air City Pack, which is a really versatile tech bag that came out pretty recently. I really enjoyed using that. It's very comfortable to wear. It has a solid build quality with weather resistant materials. 
a great organizational layout. It has lots of little slots and pockets for all of your tech and EDC essentials, a well padded and suspended laptop compartment. And it's also gonna come in at a lower price point than this. It comes in at about 14 liters, so it's not gonna be able to hold quite as much. It's not gonna be as good for bulkier items, but if you're just looking for a minimal tech and everyday bag, that's gonna you know, pretty much check off all the boxes for what you would want out of an EDC backpack and also save a little bit of money, then that's gonna be a fantastic option to keep in mind. Another bag this made me think of is the Bellroy Transit Work Pack, which has been one of my favorite EDC bags that's come out over the past year. It is about 20 liters. It has a really slick and modern aesthetic. It's gonna be something that's gonna look great with a more professional outfit to take into the office. It has a clamshell style opening, a really nice and simple organizational layout, a well padded and suspended laptop sleeve. It's comfortable to wear. It really checks off a lot of the boxes for what I look for in an ideal everyday carry backpack. It's gonna be durable. It comes in at a similar price point to this. So if you're looking for something that's gonna be a little bit more modern, sophisticated, and that's also gonna come with some great protection for your laptop and that's gonna be a great option to consider. And then the last option that I'll mention here is the Evergood CHZ22, which is a really great, simple, everyday bag. It's a top-loading bag like this one. It's able to hold an impressive amount of stuff due to its simple layout. It has a few zippered compartments for all of your smaller essentials, a suspended and well-padded laptop sleeve. It has two awesome external water bottle pockets if that's something that's important to you, a very comfortable harness system, and it's made out of materials that are gonna hold up well in any environment that you take them into. The bag comes in at a little under $200, so if you're looking for something durable and simple, if you're not looking for as much organization as this bag has to offer, then that's gonna be a fantastic option to consider. With that being said, the Synapse 19 holds up pretty well against those options, and I can definitely see why this has been such a popular EDC bag over the years. And if you're interested in a durable bag that's gonna to offer tons of organization for anything that you need to carry with you, and that's also gonna integrate well with Tom Bin's ecosystem of accessories, then this is gonna be a fantastic option to check out. And I'm definitely curious to hear what you guys think of the Synapse 19 and how it compares to some of the other popular daily bags that are currently on the market. And if there are any similar options that you think I should check out, as always, please let me know in the comments. And I want to thank the company again for sending the bag for me to test out and to you guys for watching and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.